Hey, Danarchy. <laughs> what do you think? I'm a fan. I'm a big fan of that. I like, I like, especially like the, uh, I forgot, I love that moment when, uh, she threatened to beat up Ben Shapiro. Yeah, I also like how it subtly contradicts everything that Nathan Robinson just advocated doing. <laughs> but, you know, that's the dialectic. This is a Marxist show. Uh, joining us now is a guy that I've known, uh, uh, at least in the social media sphere for years. Very, very funny guy. He's a pioneering YouTuber. He's a satirist, comedian. He's also been blocked by many advocates of an opening free exchange of ideas. Dick Coughlin, how you doing, brother? Hello, sir. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. It's great to be talking <laughs> with you, man. I can't. Yeah, my, I'm actually kind of my, amazed. My block list. My, my block list. My block list on Twitter is one of my proudest achievements. I think I shared it on on, <laughs> on Twitter just recently. It was up to about 15, 16. No, I had to set up a second Twitter just so I can see these people's tweets and respond to them now. <laughs> <laughs> How did you... You No, I mean, because you've been in this game for a while. I mean, I, I think oh, yes. I remember because you were doing stuff where you were kind of... You were satirizing like the sort of like the the whole sad like gaming men's rights thing. How did you like? How did how did basically how did these people become a uh, comedy for you? And what is it like to see them uh, take control of the White House and the world? It became comedy for me. I've always been. I I, I thought it was. I thought well, I say thank you for the grandiose in, introduction of, of iconic. I always think it's quite amusing whenever I'm. I've been into. I've done. I've been done interviews and stuff, and I'm introduced as this is Dick Coughlin. He's a famous, uh, uh, iconic comedian, and everyone in the comments is like, "Oh, I've never heard of him." But who's this? <laughs> so I, I'm like, "That's how famous I am." <laughs> you have to. So, but um, yeah, uh, I, we're I've Deepak been... Chopraing it, man. We're manifesting it into reality. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's uh, it's ironic fame. Yeah. Um, but, um, um, uh, but the reason is that I, I've always been like fascinated by the the extremes of. Of, uh, of society in general. When I, when I started, I mean, when I was 19, I was training to be an actor. And, I, I mean, you, you've seen my videos, you've seen what yeah. I look like, and I, I don't know if my appearance has had a role in this, but for some reason, every time I did an acting job, I always ended up getting cast as either a drug addict, a homeless person, or a serial killer. <laughs> and this is all I've ever ended up uh, playing. If there was an agency that dealt with just someone who could play, play those three types of roles, Are I'd, you be, serious? I'd be their number one client. Yeah, I'm serious. I, and I, 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 the first three acting jobs I ever wow. did, I was a serial, I was a serial killer, wow. and um, and it, and I ended up, I'm, and I'm a bit of a method actor, so I always sort of like, uh, sort of took things very. I didn't go out and kill people, obviously. Yeah, I was going to say I'd be careful with you to admit on the show. <laughs> but I mean, uh, uh, but I, I do I, have a lot of people watching me, Dick. So yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> don't, yeah. don't worry. Yeah. It, it, your stock has gone right down. Now yeah. I'm talking. <laughs> talking to you yeah. it's, uh, that's the new mic so sam theater's drop. associate with his own show <laughs> has a guy on he submitted to being a serial killer <laughs> mike cernovich <laughs> breaking it news be, it, it would be about right but yeah, yeah. But anyway, but I, mean, I mean i ended up sort of like getting fascinated by these kinds of extremes and and as, and and then I got sort of like into the religious debate. I've always sort of been, I've never been religious. And like when I sort of came onto YouTube, it was at the start when being an atheist was the kind of thing that was like the sort of rising right. movement. And I sort of did it. And I didn't really come on here to talk about, to come on YouTube to talk about religious people. I came on to talk about nutters. Because right. I'm just fascinated by different types of like, you know, nutters, who just, people who just have these and that, uh, bizarre beliefs that make you go, no, no one can, this is, this can't truly be real. And, um, and the, as far as the, so that led goes, you to the right wing. Yeah, exa exactly. Which led me to uh, the wars of the far right. Now, um, as far as p politics go, I mean, the far right, I was, um, when I was younger, I was, uh, I remember seeing a documentary about the British national party and, um, and just uh, when they were sort of like, this was when they were still bordering on irrelevance. But what was fascinating to me, the point where it all became really fascinating, um, was in t it was in 2004 um, when the British National Party, who went from being a a political party um, of uh, of complete irrelevance, you know, with like barely you know getting a you know, a thousand votes in the last election, to suddenly getting two and a half million votes and getting a seat in the European Parliament, and the way they did this was 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 purely genius, and I've I've described this as, in my opinion, this this sums up the you know the, the, how 
easily susceptible and and weak human be like human beings minds are and um it, it, and uh, what they did was the british national party whose uh, whose manifesto has not changed since it was incept since its inception it's the same it's black people immigrants jews all this other stuff all they did in 2004 they brought out the same a manifesto identical with that one they just took out the word immigration and they changed it to Islamification. Right. And they took out they took out all the references to black people. They didn't mention race once. They didn't talk about Pakistanis or Indians. They just said Muslims. Right. And they didn't talk about race. They talked about Islam. That was the only single difference that they that you that you had that you saw. And they went from being this party of just Holocaust denying Nazis who were a joke to being this you know suddenly they're this political force. And then. Did you? Uh, no, sorry, finish your thought. Then I had a no, no, I mean, that sort of led to the rise of uh, parties like UKIP, and then that's... And, in fact, the most interesting thing, and I've mentioned this recently, is if you look at their 2004-2005 manifesto, it is almost identical to the UKIP uh, 2010 manifesto. And the interesting thing about that is United the 2000... Independent, United UK Independence yes. Party. Right. Yes, the Nigel Farage's uh, party. It well, was Nigel right. Farage's party. But what's interesting is the Nigel Farage, is the 2010 UKIP manifesto is almost identical to the Tory party's 2015 manifesto. So if you want a sort of really simple way to show the trajectory of how far to the right politics has g gone, um, it's right there. It's there in these three, these three simple steps of going BMP, UKIP, Conservative um, in 10 it? years. Yeah, I mean that's that's exactly it. You that's a that is actually that's like a perfect blueprint right there. Did you find it interesting? Because I I know this all the time. Like I, with the religion thing. So for me, like and I and this is just a genuine viewpoint. And I, I guess I my my sort of genuine bottom line with religion is I truly don't care. Uh, and I think I would care more if. Look, I get if people have grown up in an environment where they were abused because of their yeah. religious upbringing, and whether that be Christian or Muslim or Jewish or whatever, that is a very serious thing. I don't in any way minimize that. I completely understand and know people who's liberating themselves from an abusive religious background was a major part of their lives. So I just kind of want to table that and put that in its own lane. But besides that, I mean, I, I've always been you know, agnostic, essentially, in my beliefs. I definitely, I, I do have a form of a spiritual life, and I totally think that religion is a completely malleable, hackable thing. And, you know, any one thing that is represented by, like, you know, Senegalese Sufis and, you know, Salafist terrorists, I mean, sure, it's connected, but these are radically different phenomenons, just as, like, Desmond Tutu is one of my heroes, and Pat Robertson's a great villain. On top of that, it's much more valuable to figure out everything, in my view, from a material perspective that just is going to get you to a more sophisticated understanding of how everything works. But was it weird? Like, I just noticed the conflation when I started talking about this stuff. Like, you would say, like, hey, or I would say, I think, uh, you know, categorical bigoted statements about Muslims is, uh, is both sort of factually wrong and it's kind of stupid and it is in fact bigoted, uh, even if we're playing games about it's not a race, it's a religion, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then on top of it, and then, you know, certain foreign policy things are, are wrong, you know, and so on. And then that would become this like, oh, well, you're a Muslim apologist and you just want the Muslims to move here and, you know, build a mosque and, and, and yeah. build a minaret outside your window and all of this kind of like hysterical nonsense from otherwise people who would totally identify as liberal and not like Roy Moore types. I mean, and, and of course you're like, I, I never for a second, I mean, my views on religion and public life are really obvious, which is that I don't want religion to set policy, right? So, but did you find it bizarre how religion started to get conflated with, you know, like people just have an inability to talk and have any type of actual understanding of anything? Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it, it's, it's interesting. I mean, it, it, Islamophile was one that they start, I occasionally get called, which I always think is funny. I have been accused multiple times of being a secret Muslim. Oh, which, me too. Um, which, which, I, wah, wah, wah. Well, yeah, I've, I've actually got the I actually got the trifecta. There's three that, uh, that they come. It's either secret Muslim, um, closet Christian, or crypto Jew is my <laughs> is my favourite one. And it's and for some bizarre reason, it's always those three. It's always like 
it's always secret. It's never secret Jew. It's crypto Jew. It's specifically, it's a condition. I don't know whether there's a pill for it or whatever. You're but not a, a you're not a crypto Jew. <laughs> no, oh, no, okay. no, no, unfortunately oh. not. No. Oh, um, uh, well, I mean, it, get off the it, show, it, it, Matt. Can oh, we uh, no. cut his feet? <laughs> <laughs> oh, typical, typical East Coast liberals. Um, but the, the thing is that uh, it, the interesting thing was um, I, when I learned about, I, I've done a lot of videos, obviously about um, about, the, about, na about Nazis and talking about. I've done lots of videos about the Holocaust and uh, and uh, and Holocaust denial and such. And I always tell people that you know, if you, if you want to understand what's happening in 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 the world, in the world, it's, in, as it, uh, in regards to what you said with um, with, you know, with conflating. Um, certain things to a point where you can't get to a conversation like the conflation of Islam with race and stuff is is is, exa is exactly what's always been the case. I mean, uh, I, I've I've got I've got newspaper quote uh, cuttings and uh, stuff from the 1930s where you'll literally see Nazis making the same. Oh look, Jew right. Jews aren't a race. Well, this isn't a racial issue. They're Jews of a religious group. And and I've got I, I mean, as a the Daily Mail. Um, uh, a newspaper headline I've got, which is talking about you know the the hordes of Jewish immigrants coming over from from, and if you read it, it's like this is this is a, this is an article from the. It's Daily not Mail a racial. Today. It's we're talking about yeah. culture. Why can't we have a free exchange of ideas? I, I, I it, genuinely think I genuinely think it wouldn't be difficult for them to create like an algorithm program where you just type in uh, minority or oppressed group. You know the name for that bigotry, and then the and then you, it would create these articles for it. Well, uh, speaking for of, it, you know, you could, yeah, no, I, I just I think what you're doing there though is you're showing a historical awareness which none of these people possess. But I just we have like mm. a, a minute or so left, and I want to just mm. talk to because this is a lead up, and we'll have you on again, obviously, and we'll do more uh, on both mm. platforms, but. Dave Rubin is sort of like who I'm sure has blocked you on Twitter. <laughs> Definitely blocked me. Yes, he, uh, he, he is... blocked me. He blocked me after he, he blocked me after the Slate article called him right wing, and he suddenly oh suddenly, Mother Jones to, called him right Mother wing, Jones, and he threatened to sue them. He's one of these people who likes to conveniently bring up that he's gay and Jewish when it's convenient to him, and he's like, he's like, I had, I had, I've got family members who have fought against literal Nazis, and my reply to him was, well, don't let your mother into your comment section on YouTube, and then that's when he blocked me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly or or and yeah and, and also you know and he does and he takes there's connections to the Koch brothers i mean mm -hmm. this guy i think the reason he sticks with me is i have never seen anybody like i see in media you see craven people all the time you see a fair amount of stupid people i have never seen anybody at the perfect platonic convergence of both genuinely craven and genuinely stupid as Dave yes. Rubin. Like, it blows <laughs> my mind. I mean, yeah. he's genuinely not a bright person, <laughs> which I'm going to need to, like, set yeah. aside how not bright he is because we're going to need to more thoroughly debunk him before he comes out and does whatever Tory does with this <laughs> Well, this I mean, he's going to bring up the fact writing. that it's Honaker and we're doing a video about him now. And he's going to and he's, he's gonna bring something about... He'll bring something about the pyramids and the fact that the Jews were persecuted in Egypt and he'll tie that to this somehow. That will be the way... Or, he'll, or he'll be like, oh, they're doing pyramid. Isn't that cultural appropriation? Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. <laughs> he, is, he, is like, he is like sort of like... Uh, somebody i mean i and also by the way if you ever want to feel a sense of humanity or empathy with dave rubin attempt to watch <laughs> him do stand-up uh it's one of the, then you'll forgive <laughs> everything right? he that he's done in his career uh he, he does he, he can stand up the standing yeah. up is great i've I've never seen a man stand up easier in my life it's the comedy part, part that he struggled with yeah the comedy the comedian but <laughs> And, and there's this whole clip. It's actually funny. The only clip I've ever seen of him is literally him standing in front of a sort of like morose crowd being like, any gay people out tonight? And I'm sitting there like, <laughs> why are you playing identity politics? <laughs> the hell is your problem? So, <laughs> but dude, <laughs> so, okay. And he sits there and he has like, I mean, he's sort of, I guess it's like the Larry King approach to interviewing the worst people on the planet. Yeah. Sort of like, oh, so you think that uh, IQ means that uh, black people are prone to incest. Why do you think liberals are so upset about what you're saying? Oh, you think that Muslims are all like inbred people from Arabia and we need to ban them from the country. And I guess college students can't take a joke. I'll yeah, take more how Patreon he, 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 money, His defense please. is to straw man his own position. And right. then to sort of like, and then to, it's like, it's a bizarre sort of, 
uh, sort of way of uh, way of doing it. But it, it, I mean, it works for, for him. I mean, he has the say. It's Sam Harris, who we had on the show. I mean, Sam Harris is the original kind of fake classical liberal. I remember reading articles about Sam Har- from Sam Harris in 2006 to things like my to my fellow liberals friends, and it's obviously about Islam or something like right. that. And and it, and he, but I mean, Sam Harris is a lot smarter than Dave Rubin, so he's been able oh, to get away uh, with uh, it. This is a true. Lot more. If that that if mm. ever there was a uh, true statement, uh, that was <laughs> it. So look, we're going to do more uh, with Dave Rubin, but tonight. We do need to sentence him to the pyramid. I'm sure he'll okay. sneak out with some funding from the Koch brothers and aggrieved <laughs> virgins on Patreon. He's pretty much to the him. rice that Ben Carson put in there. Yeah, Ben um. Carson will he'll 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 <laughs> sort of leverage himself out with a bag of rice that Ben Carson has stored. <laughs> but uh, Dave Rubin, uh, and also by the way, I just want to add the reason I thought of Dave Rubin is because a guy who built his whole career off of like hyperventilating and giving himself panic attacks about like. I don't know, kids at Oberlin being stupid or something and Mm. saying like, oh my God, free speech is over. Mm. Now, he is terrified of debating both me and Sam and you. I have seen that, yes. yes. He will not (laughs) respond to that because we heard his fifis because I think we, Mm. I put out a video where I had some comments about his idea that Martin Luther King It was the one where you mentioned me as well. It was the video you mentioned me and I was like, I got a shout out, got a mention on this and and then it went down and out six hours later. Oh, right, because the line was was that you said that Dave Rubin was the Grenada of the War of Ideas. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and that so so that so Dave Rubin, the Grenada of the War of Ideas, had nothing to say about Sam's whole thing with Mike Thernovich, even though that was like literally the one thing that happened in mass culture yeah. that might support his entire purpose for all of his whining and hyperventilating. And that is why, along with my friend Dick Coughlin, who everybody needs to check out and will be on the show again soon, we are sentencing along with our friends from the Institute for Progressive Momentics. We are sentencing Dave Rubin and his profoundly, deeply unfunny (laughs) self to the pyramid. Ah! Ah! Oh, you're a funny crowd. Dave Rubin in his element. As soon as you watch him do stand up, all else is forgiven. Uh, Dick mm. Coughlin. Well, that's not true. We're going to have to beat up on him a lot more. Uh, Dick Coughlin, <laughs> yeah. uh, check him out. There's going to be links to your Twitter, your YouTube, everything else. Uh, I look forward to talking with you again soon, my paisan. You too, sir. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.